this notion of core sampling, the very act of sampling a core, essentially takes something that's inherently interior and turns that surface where it hits the cutting plane into an exterior. The title of the exhibition is No More Room. We are thinking about the architecture of the incomplete and this notion that architecture can have a level of partiality and still be spatial, experiential, architectural. How does architecture get defined? And it gets defined by people and experiences and points of view. And those are also ways to construct character and qualities and even sort of spatial experience. And in some ways, this exhibition attempts to dismantle the notion of the wall. So I think here, the wall becomes really exciting for us in the exhibition because it moves, it transitions from a wall that is containing or defining space to a wall that becomes a figured frame to the exhibition itself. It essentially sets up a bracket that allows for the exhibition to unfold between the other two walls in the core. And I think in architecture, as we begin to think about walls that not only define space, but can also open up and hint towards spaces beyond, I think that really gives architecture a lot more agency to connect as opposed to enclose. And so that question of who's in and who's out gets loosened. No More Room is an exhibition that has opened during a pandemic. And so the show had to be conceived of through two different audiences. The first being an in-person, a kind of IRL audience. But then there's also the larger audience, which would be the virtual world. We imagine tonight as a variety show. Think late night with Kelly and Christy, with a few interlopers and observations there's so many layers uh, in, in this process, starting with Melvin and, and ending off with Melody and the rest of the team that I would say makes this a multifaceted project. The show is mediated out to the world through our website. It's set up in a split screen. On the left, there's an almost security camera type view of the exhibition. It shows the kind of static nature of the gallery, the blue screen walls, and the core as is. On the right side of the split screen is designed virtual and kind of filmic content that begins to choreograph a physical camera track through the space. And essentially it infills a new world, a kind of intermediate middle ground only revealed on the website in the virtual world. As architects, we were still very interested in the kind of physical component and it became really useful for us to think about scale in terms of the scale of the gallery as a container, and then also how we might begin to do a physical build that fills the space. When we look at what we're looking at here, we see this as a designed core that has qualities of extraction, also resembles a column. As it kind of moves from top to bottom, it has layers of and ranges of qualities. At SciArc, the mezzanine is such an incredible asset to how people can engage with this gallery space. And so it was really important for us to both think about the height, but to also think about how the object would begin to take on profiles as it hits the sky that moves it into a territory of something that flickers between sort of like a graphic and a skyline, even though it's internal to the gallery. One of the things that's nice about being up here is you can see the registration of the top profile. From this view, we're collapsing the two-dimensional profile on the ground, the two-dimensional paint line on the wall, and then the kind of moving line in three-dimensional space. You know, we made the decision for it to be sort of monochromatic. So when you see it from afar, it's more like something that's been extracted, almost something that's more cast. But as you get closer to it, you recognize that there was a lot of decisions about this core that are additive. The most dramatic decision was to put this rough finish onto what otherwise was a smooth model. And I think that rough finish also moves it back and forth between something that's interior and exterior. 
ways in which this as an object becomes a character in the virtual world. One of the things that the materiality does is help to bring the kind of aesthetic quality of the physical core and the virtual core into the same world. And that's really based on some of the kind of resolution issues that come up in a digital world. And so if we think about, you know, texture having a, a kind of clarity of resolution, depending on the proximity to the object. Other characters in the room are, I think, these three blue territories. And I think that as we were designing them, we understood those as backdrops or backgrounds, but we were always thinking about them as backgrounds that could also be foregrounds. And I think one way we did that was to figure them. That would help to move them back and forth between something that is supposed to be a character, something that you are supposed to see as an object filling the space, versus something that is there to participate as background. These blue screens kind of both reference blue screens in the film industry. Right, which often are used as background and then meant to be hidden, meant to be overlaid with information. But in this case, a lot of the ways that we've done the cutouts or the ways that the blue screens actually transition to the floor and start to get a physical thickness, that's another way that it mediates between the, the kind of graphic and kind of shape quality of the blue screen to something that starts to have a physical material thickness that maybe bridges or transitions towards the core in the center of the space, which clearly has object and material qualities. What we're seeing here is one version of the show, but there's a hidden world. And that content was thought of in three acts. The first act is essentially doubling down on the core as the main actor. The second episode gives viewers insight into, let's say, the origins or the DNA from which this core may have come from. So the third episode situates the physical camera at the near center of this physical core. It's no longer objectifying this designed object, but it's actually using it almost like a camera frame or a cropping tool. The content in that episode is beginning to engage issues of scale and issues of context and environment. What we do is we take viewers through three different temporal speeds. So each of the blue walls are assigned a kind of temporal speed that is different from that of the physical camera. Or each of the walls convey an even slower way of engaging the exhibition. I think that in each way, the episodes kind of hint to how we see this exhibition moving more towards architecture and away from an exhibition. The first episode, the one where the core kind of looks at itself, is in some ways sort of acknowledging that often when architecture lands in the world, it often has to have made many decisions along the way to be a singular mass or object that lands in the world. But we all understand that architecture, while might be a singular building or a singular set of things, has to engage in a community, in a context, in a city, and that the way people approach and engage architecture is, you know, incredibly diverse.